Hello and welcome back to another video. So very quickly a bit of background for the next video you're about to see. Do you remember when we did the Miley Tunnel in Preston? We did an explore through the Miley Railway Tunnel. Well, we parked our cars at the Ribble Steam Railway, which is a, a preserve railway in Preston. And Martin, who came with us, is a volunteer from the Ribble Steam Railway. So when we went back to our cars, we was at the, uh, the railway centre and we got a guided tour around the locomotive works and some of the sheds. So today's video is very railway related, very geeky, and um, I think you'll enjoy it because it's sort of a glimpse into a bygone era. And when I was filming around the locomotive works at the Ribblesteam Railway, um, I very much was thinking about Horwich Works when we did that video and how it would have been in, in the locomotive works and how the, the bustle and the hustle and the sounds of machinery. And so the first part of this video in the locomotive works bit is very noisy. So bear with it because I'm trying to show you what it was like, but you can also imagine what these places would have been like when they were maintaining and building steam locomotives, you know, these big massive railway works all around Britain. Um, in the second part of the video, we go out into some of the sheds and we take a look at some of the old uh, rolling stock, some of the old carriages and some of the uh, steam and diesel locomotives. So I hope you enjoy it. One for the railway fans, I'm hoping to go back to the Ribble Steam Railway to uh, take a look at some of the locomotives in action. Bear with the first bit, it's very noisy, but thanks to the Ribble Steam Railway and let's take a look around the locomotive works. Hello, welcome back to another video. I don't know if you remember, a few weeks ago we did the Miley Tunnel in Preston. Well, after that, we came back here for a brew. This is the Ribble Steam Railway. And Martin here, he's gonna take us round, show us what they do, just briefly, look at some of the locos they've got here, and give us a, just a quick tour around. So, Martin. So in the past, we've done uh, videos about the Horwich Locomotive Works, and we've looked at steam trains and it was quite fascinating coming here because although I will try and explain what's going on but it, this is kind of like this is what it would have been like in those locomotive works of the past and it's happening here now in Preston and at all these preserve railways across the country where volunteers very skilled volunteers are working on this, these steam engines and diesel locomotives and preserving them for future generations um, nothing but admiration for these people. Martin, we've got a steam loco behind us and it's in bits. Yeah. What's this we're looking at? We're looking at the, the Peckett and Sons um, work number 1935, now locally it's Hornet. Hornet? Yeah. Um, built in 1937. No. No, no boiler, no bucket. <laughs> So as you can see, nothing in there at the minute. Um, I'll show you the top bit first. It just shows you how these things were built. Uh, and then obviously you've got the front end there, forgive my lack of knowledge. And this, uh, this great saddle tank that's next to you here, Martin, is the actual saddle tank that will eventually go on top of the boiler. Right, so this thing is going to eventually be lifted when you've done what you're doing and it will go and sit on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, get it. Yeah, got water. it. Right, so sat this sat over... The, the, were the tubes down there that carried heat? Yeah, you'll have the boiler. The boiler will all be in here with all the rods going through. Taking the heat to That's it. heat the water in this thing, which will come through to the the front right. of, the, of the steam locomotive. Wow! Which you can see behind. This is all yeah. the gubbins there. Yeah. Is this thing here? That is a Huntlet austerity engine. Um, right. We have a few of these dotted around the place in various states of disrepair. <laughs> So this, this thing here, as you've just been saying, is one of the biggest locomotives they've got here and it's currently in, on... You, you, 
Rest restoration work is ongoing, is that right? Yes. Yes. Right. Pretty much. I imagine these things take a lot of work. The guys here that are working on the machines must have such knowledge. I mean, obviously engineers to know how, not only how these things work, but to be able to, you know, fix, repair, mend, build the parts for them. Um, so kudos to them to be honest with you. So we have a carriage, so you do carriages as well, Martin? Yeah. Right, so, is that the steam heat pipe? That's the steam heat bag that right. connects to either the loco or additional carriages on the train. Right. That there is your brake pipe. That's your brake. That is a link up for the onboard PA, which has been fitted fairly recently. Retrofitted, and there's your hook, is it? That is part of the KD coupler which is the standard thing for connecting the carriages together and then there's your standard coupling hook for connecting to um, industrial locomotives. Pressure. The, the brakes fail safe yeah. like a car, yeah. Yeah, so right now the brakes... So Martin, you've just acquired this, this machine yeah. from an engineering firm. Yeah. And what are you doing here, what are you making there? What it is, it's these are these are threaded deliberately because they go in between the inner and outer firebox of a boiler. So we're looking at these things here. So you've got tubes that go down there, are they? Yeah. Yeah. This boiler hasn't been tubed yet because it's only recently been finished, really. Obviously these gentlemen have brought skills along to the uh, Ribblesteam Railway and they are re-engineering and remaking parts for the uh, locomotives and all sorts really for carriages as well. This is a manifold that goes on the side of that boiler. Right. But the, these two are the older ones and we're not 100% sure whether they will keep the, uh, the actual steam hit in. I've shown this as an example of the actual parts that they have to make and re-engineer. Um, and imagine that's quite a, you know, there'd be, be a fair bit of precision made, you know, in making that part. And as Martin said, it's part of the boiler uh, mechanism, but this is the sort of thing they're doing here and fascinating, the detail that they have to go into to uh, keep these machines running. If you want to volunteer and be part of the wonderful stuff they're doing here at this uh, preserved railway line. Well, these are dotted all over the country. This is just one example. This is amazing, to be honest with you, absolutely amazing. Um, obviously, a few weeks ago, we did a, a video about Horwich Works. Here it is, still working. Obviously not Horwich Works, but it's good to see that, you know, the railways and steam and building stuff and maintaining it is still alive, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Let's hope the younger generation are learning these skills. Right, so we went out back into some of these sheds. It gets a bit quieter now, and we're going to look at... Um, some of the carriages and there's a diesel locomotive here and um, we're about to get told all about it. Right, so this is who built the shunter? Is it English Electric? English Electric. So it's an English Electric yeah. that got exported. Yeah. All the um, sort of, what's the word, what, all, the, all the indicators inside the metric because it was an export job. Yeah. It was built for a foreign market. Yeah. Well then it ended up coming back it, it, and it's what we call it a class 11. Well, it is an export yeah. an export version of class 11. It isn't a BR class 11. It's right. an export version of. Brilliant. Let me just show you this. This is amazing. Look at this baby. Look at that. Imagine the That's beautiful. One. That yeah. And it's a runner as well, isn't it, Martin? Oh, Martin's jumping up in there. Oh yes. We're going in. Oh, we're going in. Apparently, we can go in. Gordon's in. I'm going in. <laughs> wow. Brilliant. Unfortunately, I can't put the cab light on because I don't know where the battery isolator is for this. <laughs> so we'll have to operate under torch. 
That's good enough, it's looking good. Yeah. Right, so, wow. So, point, that's in kilometres. <laughs> that's in kilometres. So this is the speedo? That's the speedo in kilometres. Right, which is obviously unusual for a local built, obviously, around this time, but obviously we know yeah. it's for an export market. Yeah. All those um, d descriptions under there yeah. all mean various things in Dutch. Oh, in Dutch. All right. Well, if you can capture Stop. that. Yeah, so we've got various Dutch things there. Kil them. Kilometres there. Maximum yeah. speed. Then we've got the usual uh, water temp, yeah. oil pressure and oil temp. Those, those have probably been uh, retrofitted by our diesel crew to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the main thing there is your brake pressure, <laughs> the uh, white face gauge there, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, so... And it's dual control. Yeah. Right, Let's so, so right. dual control, so... I don't understand why would it be dual control? Why is it? Are you do when you take it for yeah? So if you work in the yard, right? So take it that's for going that way. You could be either working the yard go. on this side or the other side. So basically, what you'd be doing is if you're keeping an eye out on your left or your right, depending on how your working is, then you can obviously see. You can see the Gordon's lever is moving. Yeah, as you move that because one. Because I'm moving that one. Right. So you might have to have want to have visual on that side of the yard yeah. while you're working the the the, the, the the wagons or whatever freight you're moving, you're shunting. Yeah. Right, so yeah, so you could stand this side, work that and look down that way, yeah. down the yard. Yeah. Or you could stand that side and obviously depending on which side you did, was it what was it was it a pilot, the the guy out on in the yard yeah, sort of direction? Shunter. Shunter, shunter, yeah. Shunter, yeah. 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 You get that now, but the, the, someone will get out on there, and these days they have radio communication. But if you notice, when we're at um, Blackpool North with the tornado, and yeah. the tornado was yeah. reversing in. He had a radio. And he he yeah. was doing that with his hand yeah. Yeah. to bring it in. He yeah. had a radio as well, but yeah. he was doing it old school as well. Was, yeah. And also, obviously, you can go that way and work that way. Here we've got the sunroof. So yeah, yeah, we even got a sunroof there. Look, Mark. Oh, why would you? Why would you have a, a, that in the roof? I think if you had to have doors shut, yeah, because you didn't fall out, you needed ventilation. Yeah, yeah. Some of them. These, Take it on yeah, a hot day, open, then. These open. They're, the uh, front lights open, but also the um, the the cab windows drop as well. Yeah. So you can have like optimum ventilation because yeah. you can mm. imagine you getting stuffy in here. Right, I heard, I once, <laughs> I'll tell you something now. <clears throat> I once cabbed an away. Oh wow. And the driver was in there doing this. Pss, 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 and we said, what are you doing? He said, I'm pumping the fuel from one of the tanks to another tank. And I wonder if that's why that reads in reverse, it's telling you what you've pumped through ah. and that your upper tank is now empty and your lower tank has got something in. Now, I could be wrong, and there'll be somebody out there that'll know about 08, so they used to drive them, but there was, yeah. he said he's pumping fuel from, it obviously wouldn't have been up here, but he's pumping fuel from one tank to yeah. another. Maybe a reserve? Possibly a reserve, who knows? Um, but we'll leave that with you, because uh, <coughs> you'll obviously know when you comment down below. This is amazing. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? You like it, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Tornado were good, but you like it the diesel. Can you imagine getting this running now? And well, you can come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cab ride. Can yeah. we have a cab ride? Yeah. I'll soon sort that out. Even on the teddy bear. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, we're both about to we? teddy bear out. Yeah. Teddy bear, class 14 that, wasn't it? Yeah. They're very accommodating, they're very friendly in Rubblestein Railway. Are they? That's off to them. Yeah, yeah. They're, very, they're a lovely bunch. So you've got, so that goes in there. And that on goes top on top of there. there. And then you basically can switch the thing on. You can switch the thing on. You pull it round to engine only initially. Yeah. Well, no, you pull it round to start initially to get it started and then go to engine only. Yeah. And before you set off, you put it into one. That will release that. Yeah and give you a run of the accelerator. 
to uh, go with them, go whichever direction you want to go. Right. Look at that. Driver's eye view. Well, it's been a long time since I've been in the cab of what is the nearest 2 and away I'm going to get today. This <laughs> is absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Bit of English electric power for you. Wonder where this one was built. Do we know? I can find out for you. I'm not 100% sure. I'll, I'll let you know. For instance, if it was a Vulcan foundry or one of the orange ones. Or it might have even been a local one from Preston. Yeah, yeah. Was it Preston? Yeah, Strand Road. Strand Road, wasn't it? Yeah. Is that what it was Yeah, so it's yeah. come back home. Yeah, I'm sure I've heard that story. Well, I can find out for you, though. Right, so we're going to take a look inside uh, this carriage now. Is this Mark 1? This these is what are, I think of as a Mark 1. These are Mark 1s, yeah. Right, so th these would have seen steam. These would have seen steam and early diesel. Right, yeah. I remember, so back in the early 80s, these were still knocking about, as far as I'm aware. Uh, I'm not an expert on carriages, but yeah, these were still knocking about, and you get on the odd train, and it was Mark 1s, and you still get Mark 1 corridor stock. Uh, makes you feel old, doesn't it? But let's take a look inside here. Right. So, is this a guard van? This is a guard van. This is, this is where I hang out when I'm doing my guards bit. Right. We've got the handbrake which pulls the brakes on on this carriage only. This carriage only? Yeah. Would, would it stop the train that? Uh, it can it, do, depending on. Slow it. Um, Take it. It, it definitely definitely holds it. Yeah. If uh, if the uh, if the guard forgets to take it off. Mm. Right, Martin. What is that red thing you've got all up there? This is a vacuum setter, and it uh, effectively destroys the vacuum pressure in the uh, in the in the brake system, and effectively puts the brakes on like this. Uh, yeah, it doesn't go. Bit, bit of a sound effect there, yeah. Bit of a sound effect. Yeah. The air draws through these holes here. Yeah. And ultimately goes through the brake system and uh, destroys the vacuum. De destroys the vacuum. The gauge would usually read around 21 inches, and it was fall back to zero when um, when when that happens. So as Martin says, a lot of this older stock was vacuum braked, and I believe that the vacuum sort of held the brake uh, pads off the wheels. And when the vacuum was destroyed, the pads uh, clamped onto the wheels and slowed the train down. This is quite a unique carriage. It's got a bit of a driving bit or, or a, a guard's bit where it can guide the train uh, from this seat that Martin's in. It's got a brake there. It's got a horn. Martin will just explain it briefly. But it's for when the train is reversing. And we have an electric tail light. Right. An electric headlight. A horn, which has got a bit of a cold at the minute. Again, we've got a, a vacuum brake setter and a vacuum gauge. So you can sit there, watch out and apply the brakes if necessary. Just look at this in here, honestly. Um, mile after mile after mile on one of these things. Remember the uh, BR, BR um, little logo on the mirror there? These things... Um, Used to get beaten up in here frequently by my train spotting mates. <laughs> and I always hated corridor stock because we used to get in one of these, six of us, and they went mental. Whereas in, in the open stock, they had to behave. So, uh, yeah, head out the window there, bashing it, all the rest of it. Yes. Bygone era. So I'm sure quite a few of you will remember the old corridor stock. Um, they were quite nice, to be honest with you, quite luxurious. And look at all that wood. No plastic here. This brings back memories, memories of travelling for miles and miles in my train spotting days in 1981, 82, 83, listening to the likes of uh, electro pop music, craft work, orchestral manoeuvres in the dark for mile after mile as we travelled the country. Quite amazing. Can I? Boo. See this thing for me, I remember these, this is where you can turn the heat on and off for the carriage and quite well, often back in the day, yeah. in the 80s, even in the 80s, I, don't know, I keep referring back to them, you get on the one of these, it'd be freezing cold and you go bloody hell the heating's off <laughs> yeah. and turn it on. Reminiscing. No. 25, I think, I remember getting a 25 out of Manchester, Victoria on the North Wales line. Um, 
we couldn't believe it. We turned up, there was a 25 on the North Wales train. Wow. Yeah, honestly, probably maximum speed about 60 or something like that. <laughs> That's a local light switch for in here. Proper old school. That is the isolator to the next object. The pie oven. This is an oven? Pie oven. You're joking. I'm not. Right. Yes, it is an oven. Look at that. My mum had an oven like that. <laughs> Where's that this heat from? Just steam heat? No, no, that would have been powered off the electric train heat. So it used electric and steam, but yeah. that's an electric oven? Yeah. Right, got it, right. Behind you though, that, that column there yeah. is a guard radiator. Oh yeah. On top of there is a hot plate. You yeah. can put your brew can on there. I have also, as personal favorite for Santa's, Steam heated mince pies. Don't you just love the way the thought of things like putting your brew on there, putting an oven in here for the guard. Bit hungry. It was amazing. I'm hungry now as well. It was amazing, weren't it? The stuff yeah. they thought of. Absolutely amazing. Well, yeah. like the, 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 the sort of the early days of a welfare van, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, we've got to look after you. So yeah. yeah. There's an oven for your pie. Yeah. And for your brew. Proper but, employer. Yeah. There's yeah. <laughs> your ways. Get on with your job. <laughs> Right, so the next thing we're going to have a look at is called Stanlow. So it's a local from the Stanlow oil refinery. Martin's going to tell us more, but we're going this way, right around this carriage. Yeah. So I, I, know, I now know that's a saddle tank. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so before we take a look at Stanlow, we'll take a look at this saddle tank. Now, I know that one of the Agecroft locomotives is here at Ribblestein Railway. I think this was from the Corby Steelworks, so I don't think it's from Agecroft. I will be going back and we'll definitely take a look at Agecroft. Um, I think it's in one of the other sheds, so we don't see it. Oh, and we're going in this one as well. <laughs> I should have brought my light. Well, I've got my torch. We'll have a look. Right, can you pass the camera to you, Gordon? This was a bit of a first for me, cabin a saddle tank. Love the uh, the gauges in this thing, and that one is actually a clock. How beautiful is that? I believe that is the vacuum brake indicator. And if I do ever go back, I'd love to see this running because it is a runner for the uh, Ribblestein Railway. This takes out some of the uh, visitors' trains that they regularly run up here. Theory. That's where the fire is. <coughs> you look down in there, look at that. you'll see the ash, and you'll see those tubes yeah. that run, send the heat. Oh yeah. In the boiler, that's the boiler system. Yeah. Where the heat transfers down there and heats up the water, creates it into steam. Wow. Look at the ash in that. That's it. See, I've never seen all this. Never seen this. Absolutely incredible. And this is a saddle tank, isn't it? Yeah. 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 That's the ten yeah. that was so cold there. Uh, mm. yeah. Absolutely brilliant, total uh, appreciation for this now. Yeah. I've never looked inside a firebox like that, that's brilliant. Anyway, there's something else. What are we looking at next? If you dive over that side, we're going to have a look at Stanlow. Stanlow, right, so now we're going to look at Stanlow. Eternally, this field remains Stanlow. You've got to be an OMD fan to know what I'm on about, but I take it this was based at the uh, the refinery, this thing, and now it's here. Stanlow number four. Let's go on board and have a look and see what it's like. So what was this thing? This this was based at Stanlow, was it, Martin? This was based at Stanlow for shunting stuff around the yard. It's um, it's well really hasn't changed from Stanlow to Ribble Steam really. It's still our yard shunter, 
but it does sometimes see very rem very randomly see uh, mainline action uh, usually on diesel goers if we're struggling to put something out it does uh, it does at least one turn for us during a diesel goer now that's your that's your accelerator there that's your brake yeah that's purely for purely for low coal braking and then it was fitted in the uh, in the 90s with a vacuum brake off a um, of a first generation multiple unit for um, operating with the coaches. Again, I love the radiators on it. It's got radiators in yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I imagine it would get quite cold in here, couldn't it, really? Yeah, it really could. Look at this. Can't beat that view, can you? No. Commanding view over the line. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, there's a front offer 20 there. It's a yeah. front offer class 20. Yeah. Can you believe that? Wow. And a bit of an old steam train there as well. Saddle tank. And so, yeah, saddle tank there. Quite a fascinating place, this, I must admit. Now, I'm going on there about the front of a class 20. If you don't know what a class 20 is, this is a class 20, it's a diesel locomotive. Look at the very front end because you're about to see something very, very different. This picture courtesy of the Neen Valley Railway, which is another preserved railway. Uh, pristine condition, Class 20 there. Let's, still, let's take a look at the front end of this other Class 20. Uh, right, so let's take a look at this 20, Class 20. Look at the front of this. Depot 1D, I don't know about its actual number though, unfortunately. Was it a 20 or was it a, another export job? No, 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 it is a, it is a standard VR20 nose comb, that. It's, quite, it's been sliced off well, hasn't it? Yeah. English Electric, Class 20. Ah, amazing stuff, look at that. With the uh, the disc head codes on front as well, and I, I could never work out disc disc head codes. And there's a bit of an old, uh, sat another saddle uh, yeah. tank engine there. Yeah. Half, uh, I take it that's in. Are you, are you, sat, are you kind of advising that for spares? No, definitely not. No, uh, the owner's actually here at the moment and he's looking to try and get it running. Right, so somebody's bought that. Somebody's bought that. I mean, tend to do that all. Yeah. Wow. Hull form Leslie 3732. Yeah. 1928 is called number 13. And uh, she's uh, slightly older than Linda. But oh, so it's similar to what we looked at in there, yes. right? So this is going to be someone's labour of love that's going to take many, many years to uh, do up and uh, put back to its former condition. Good luck to them. Right. It's got the uh, number, the original number on. <laughs> oh yeah. Thirteen with the paint. Number thirteen. You can see it's a different layers of paint on there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. And that is an, an example of a well tank probably used by the Central uh, Electric Generation Board for transfer, transport, transporting transformers around the place. Right. What was the white banding for then? 
the white banding tells you which end of the uh, of the wagon has got the tipping door. The white banding. So we just had a bit of a little debate about the white banding, and that's what we're talking about. That white diagonal line that goes down those old railway trucks there. So it's where the tipping door is, according to Martin. <laughs> Some weight in that is just sat on its own before it even starts carrying what it's got to do. Yeah. Martin, that was brilliant. Yeah. Unexpected and brilliant. Thanks for that. Yeah. Thanks for taking us round. Fascinating stuff. I'll put the link down below if you fancy a trip to Preston to look round there. The very friendly bunch. I highly recommend it. It's now freezing. It's raining. We're going back inside for a brew. <coughs> Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Thanks, Gordon. <laughs> Until, yeah. next <laughs> Until next time. Until next time.